The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. This evening, I want to take the next few minutes to look at marriage and family life. Each year, we will be drawing themes from the overarching theme, Possessing the Nations. <laughs> But the slogan, I am an agent of transformation, will not change. Because we don't want to lose our focus by the annual team. You see these young people that are here? So, I mean, I'm here, or more, I won't need you. They are people's children. They have mothers. Oh, my man. Some may not know their fathers, but at least they have mothers. Maybe let me ask you, where is your son? Some of us, our children, they we have to sometimes drag them to church because they don't love Jesus. Sometimes when you are an elder, you something you have to give the person a some warning go to church if you don't go to church and you don't force people to to love Jesus. and so i've selected this one marriage and family life just because of what we saw they are people's children now, the family forms the base of the society. Now, if you say we are possessing the nations, if we don't possess the family, then we can't possess the nation. And you say, because the family is the basic unit of the society and by extension, the nations. So if you want to win nations and possess nations, we must be careful how we handle our families. And we need to call attention to the institution of marriage again. I believe that the society we have is a reflection of our homes. I'll start from Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament. I'll read from chapter 2 and from 13. Another thing you do, you flood the Lord's altar with tears. You weep and will because he no longer looks with favor on your offerings or accept them with pleasure from your hands. You ask why? It is because the Lord is the witness between you and the wife of your youth. You have been unfaithful to her, or you have been unfaithful to him. Though she or he is your party, the wife or the husband of your marriage covenant, has not the one God made you? You belong to him, you belong to her in body and spirit. And what does the one God seek? Godly offspring. When I ask that question, then you respond. And what does the one God seek? Godly offspring. I want to ask again. And what does the one God seek? Godly offspring. 
So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful to your wife or to your spouse of your youth. The man who hates and divorces his wife, says the Lord, the God of Israel, does violence to the one he should protect. Now, if you divorce a wife, he says that you have done violence to the one you are supposed to protect. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful. Now, this is Malachi. He is just trying to bring the people's mind back to base. Trying to remind them of the relationship between Israel and God and the covenant that God has established. Now they have just returned from Israel and he's trying to let them know who God is and what God has said, and he want them to come back to basis. So he spoke about how God hates divorce and how they should come back to worship, pay their tithes and all that, because he wanted them to be restored and reconciled back to God. My approach in this presentation is not to teach marriage and family life. No, I've not come to teach you how you. But to join Malachi to seek to motivate us to conform to God's plan of marriage. You see, um, some Pharisees went to Jesus. Pharisees will be called you in Jane in Matthew chapter 19. Oh, Matthew, as a part of the Tidu and they asked him uh, a question. No, you see, normally when people ask questions, they have the answers themselves. And then, so we got BBI, the BBI, or no one, no one, no one, and for a Pharisee to go to Jesus, they are schemers. No. Before they will go, they have planned what to do. No. Because they were always seeking to hand him over to the authorities. Now we have a to Jesus with Jacob and Bibino. The three will put his own coat. We are only to put your answer. Over to Jesus, yes, one. No more in Now listen to what they said in Matthew 19. Now we are saying, yeah, who's a yes, who are a two group, Matthew and Bano. Are we together? And I'm going Let me see by. Yeah, so I'm in the one side. Now read from verse 3. Some Pharisees came to him to test him. You see, I said, Pharisees will be bad. I had forgotten that the word test is, was even in what I was going to read. <laughs> is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? What's it? And the best say, Obama be jane yere, it will be bia. Having to rent, I was say, I am bia so munka. He replied, Yes, that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female. What's in fit ya say no? We have to pump up Obama and Oba. And said, for this reason, no, a man will leave his father. Was in the same Obama a be jane jah. And mother, and the man, and they united to his wife, and the two become one flesh. So that, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no man suffer. But was it the direct answer to their question? Your question was direct. They are, saying, they are asking that, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any or every reason? You see, the answer they are expecting yes or no. So, you know, 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 Jesus somehow dodged the question. And then Jesus said, You see, their question is a dangerous question. 
they are planning. They said they are going to test it. The, the question is, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any or every reason? I said, what is it? I said, 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 I you see, the, the things that causes divorce, you can you can't list them. And then, and then my dear, what you by and Evan, what you mean killing your enemy? It also. You see, I have heard of this couple. The the day of the wedding, when they went home in the night, uh, this lady who had gone to the husband's house saw something cross, and she thought that that was a mouse. 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 Hey, a girl. Then the husband said. What a mouse? A zebra. Mouse. What a zebra? It's not a mouse. A zebra. Mouse in my house. I saw it. I saw it. What you hear? Mouse. No mouse. Mouse. A zebra. A zebra. A zebra. A zebra. A zebra. That was the end. <laughs> but but you can imagine the simple things that brings tension between you and your husband. And then you man get get ya to the beer. Sometimes husbands are so angry because there's too much salt in the soup. And that one, the anger will go like twos. No, John chapter 8, verse 28 and 20. You own us and what you So Jesus said, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you know that I am the one claim and that I do nothing on my own. But speak just what the Father has taught me. Now, yes, you. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. So, what do you do in marriage? Do what pleases him. Because sometimes it's difficult to please a spouse. What she has done or he has done demands that you don't speak to her. Sometimes you are you are justified, granted as to if you look at the, the magnitude of the wickedness that has been displayed by a spouse to you, and then you think that no, enough is enough, but do what you please. Like Jesus said, in the beginning it was not like that. He said the creator made male a man and a wife. And he has joined them together and the two have become one. Don't let the LGBTQA community deceive us. Their actions are not just sin, it is an abomination. Their actions are insults to the intelligence of God. They are trying to say that God has no sense. He should have done it this way. And the Bible says, the Bible says, Jesus said, the creator, yes, say, original, plan marriage to be between biologically male and biologically female. Then he says what God has put together. Let no man separate. And the Pharisees will not stop. Then he said, why is it that Moses gave certificate of divorce? You see, Jesus said, it is because of the hardness of your heart. Whatever Moses will say, you will not heed it. So he says, okay, come to a certificate and divorce. This woman called Mrs. Pew had gone to university to give a lecture and to encourage young women to marry. 
No, I call to go so I put on four No sooner had she finished uh, the lecture than this beautiful, sophisticated, by scornful lady who was at the back there lifted out the hand to challenge her. Eh, and what's it And I'm telling you, any baby, I'm not telling you, baby, put your this is the question here. Now, Mrs. P, in your remark, you stated that you thought marriage was the greatest career for a woman. In my opinion, marriage is almost finished. And most of us here feel the same. We don't think it is necessary or even desirable to link yourself sexually to one partner in your early 20s and limit yourself to him for the rest of your life. We don't think it's necessary or even desirable to link yourself sexually to one partner in your early 20s and limit yourself only to that one person for the rest of your life. Now, that is her understanding of marriage. And then she said, we think it is ridiculous. No, she oh, where the idea Every eye was reverted to this lady. As she continued, I am sleeping with a fellow I like. At the moment, I have a boyfriend. Somebody me wo obarima Adam for. I don't want to marry him. And I don't think he intends to marry me either. This is not my first love affair. And probably won't be the last. I can't see anything wrong with this. Someday, when and if I choose to have a child, I may be forced by society to marry. But until then, I'll have nothing to do with that. But if I ever choose to marry, and the relationship goes bad, I shall not be trapped in it. Mrs. P. Mrs. P. We are hardly blind. And if we are not blind. We see what marriage has done to our parents. And to others. And we don't like what we see. Do you have a ready answer? This university student in this episode represents an era when marriage among even Christians is Christian. Now she's speaking for a group of people. Marriage is not appreciated by the young people any longer. And I'm not talking about Abano. Our young people are so many. So many. In our time, young people see family life as a border. And they embrace, and they embrace mono. And they're not talking about Abano. They must say our young people are so dear. An inconvenience. And I hear there, Emma, the point for any other to their freedom. It's too unfair to them. They do. The lack of faith in the institution of marriage is rendering the family, marriage and family life endangered institution. Now, you see, beyond this lady, I myself went to preach on marriage. Now, it is the Ababa way can 
Me ano me go kan awale sembi and I say me go ma asen kaye bi wawari ya. It was a program that was organized by an FM station. He drew a whole lot of young people and uh, and other ministers and I uh, had the privilege of being the speaker. Now your FM station be omo organize ya. Me go for me pray ba ya. Me no mihi me say me okasa for. Now when I finish speaking. Now me kasa yu ya no. One of the presenters, this young woman. Now, one more, one more, yeah, one more. She made the money in the coffee one. I'm going back home. Man, I'm back home. Now, quickly took the stage. Now, we're we're doing a on the brain in animal. And then the statement she made. That's what kind of effectively made all that I've said for about forty minutes nonsense. I say more. I'm going to meet you at your next one. I say I'm back home. Okay, I say I'm going to be coming in. I say I'm going to. I sat down there and I, I wanted to cry. I had to bow down my head and pray, said, Father, I have spoken. Let this word work in those times. Should I tell you what she said? Yes. When she took the mic, then she said, as for marriage, a friend of mine has told me that marriage is like bread in an oven. Once they are in there and they are feeling the heat, they have lined up some others outside the oven ready to enter. As for me, I will never go into this oven. <laughs> <laughs> but please remember that God instituted marriage. And for those of us who are Christians, we have to fight and save the institution. Otherwise, the enemy will destroy us. Marriage is not a trap. No, if marriage is bad, it's bad because of the two persons involved. But so far as God is concerned, He will not give us anything that will be a burden to us. When God instituted marriage, it was part of the things that he said is good. I want to tell you on authority that if there is anything that God has given mankind beyond Jesus and his spirit, then it is marriage. Two. Two are better than one. And when you bring God in it, you say a cord of three is difficult to do properly. Then when you bring your children into the relationship between you, your spouse, and God, a generational blessing is guaranteed. And now, listen, he says that what is God expecting from the union? Godly, godly children. Godly children. See, when two believers come to the altar, heaven rejoices. Because he knows that their children are not going to be like the picture you see. Because God is not interested in these things happening. Godly children. But Freddie Douglas have said, and I quote, it is easier to build. Strong children. What's it? I Strong godly children. I Than to repair broken men. I am 
and Koda, why are so bright here? No, what's your channel? So, but yes, I don't want a big deal on Nassau. I'm already the agent. It is easier to build godly children. A young mercy, who between two more crystal moon, I'm over any other year, crystal four, than to repair broken men. A young mercy, as in say, one of what's your channel, who between at the two more, I'm over here, and the agent. Now, in Genesis chapter 18. Most of them are the kind of what read 18 and 19. They can kind of do what you need to do. Genesis 18 18. Most of them are the kind of what you need to do. And you move to what you need to do. Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation. Abraham may or my or Kuni and it to me, my and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he would direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. Now, the next line says, So that. The Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Training of his children will allow God to bring to pass what his intention for Abraham. See, in Deuteronomy chapter 6, when you read from verse 1, God says that these are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess. Now, when you jump to verse 4, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Now, see, Israel, Verse says that these commands that I give you today are to be on your heart. And you say, Impress them on, on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road. When you lie down and when you get up. Proverbs say that train up a child the way he should go. When he is grown, he will never depart from us. Our union is not just for our benefit. God expects godly children. But I'm not in any way suggesting that marriage is children. And you know, I want to please encourage you. If you have not been praying together, you are not bringing God into the marriage. You have to raise the family altar again. I was now, John and Charles Wesley had a, a very godly mother. John Charles Wesley, no, Mammy was so This woman, Susanna, had 11 children. No, Mammy and Fred Susanna, no, 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 But the woman prayed one hour every day. Mammy, no, that you have a no, or bought and paid on the back. Then when she's praying, all the children will sit quietly and they will not allow anyone to go and disturb the mother. When you get there at the time the mother is praying, it's a no good area, they will not disturb. And out of a prayer, we had John West, we had Charles West, we had great people came out of her lungs. <laughs> After 150 years after the death of Jonathan Edwards, this godly man, 
Edward. Jonathan Edwards. Jonathan Edward. Someone decided to trace his ancestry and look at how God has dealt with. No, we put it. Only if you see for more, see the Nyabo Pony, not see for Adi Adi Abedro. And this was the legacy that he saw. Now we need a two more free, sir, or pay my assay. Out of him, Monsieur Pony, there is there has come out one U.S. vice president. Now see, and now yeah, about to remember. President Abedri Jeba Kufi Mubaye. Three senators. Ena atuje atitira for anate atitira tu for ewo abaya mono ni ase free baye. Three governors. Ena governors ni ase free mubaye. Three mayors. Ena mayor for so ni ase free mubaye. Thirteen or thirteen college presidents. Ena college so mperi for two ni ase free mubaye. Ghana we save the vice chancellor. Yeah, I can say yeah. So, for more than four, thirty judges. And at the more four, I saw two million seven hundred seventy-four mobile. Sixty-five professors. And at the four, I can see a room. Yeah, I can go. The four, the minimum four, I can see. Eighty public offices. And at one more million, I do my boy or man. No, I be all chief. I can see by hundred lawyers. And at a lawyer for a few, I can see by hundred missionaries. And I was on them about some part of the world. My interest is not in the social ladder they they climb. And you know, maybe I made too much. Mike, yeah, 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 no. And yes, sir. Oh, money more. Oh, we are saying who name one person maybe can. But the godly foundation they stand on. Name mum. Yami sumu yami sumu for pemua. Wong ena no etu. Wong aja no tu yano. Now the Christian tradition he belonged to. And the Christo. They saw marriage and family life as a calling. Oh, our real any our real more say a offering. I'm afraid it's a call to marriage. A offering. I'm afraid about our real. So when you decide to marry, they believe that you are called to marry. So you are called just as I've been called to be a minister. Called to marry. And to me, I'm afraid say as a bakani as a as a proud of one. The children are called to respect their parents and to obey God. And my friends, you know, what do I buy? I mean, we say, "Oh, me soon, I mean, no, me soon, I mean, no, we need to take my name." So, if I go into marriage to go and support my wife's salvation, then I will not dwell on her weakness. It is a me kwa wari mu se me kubwa me yere amene ni angwa. I will not throw her away that I'll divorce. And I I want you to have this mentality. I was speaking like this somewhere many years ago. And there was this member Dickness who started serving and later on she started crying and wailing in the church and they had to risk her out. Na osunfu baby esha asia se o pray na osun enti ni akopa yesa na yesa wadi ni free asafunum epo abonte. Na after church I went to her. Enti yapo asol na mikoa nchi. Mama, what's the problem? Mama edi asem. And she said if I had distance earlier. If I had these things earlier, I'm sure you're also saying that my children would not have been wayward. If I had these things earlier, I'm sure you're also saying that my children would not have been wayward. So I thought that if she's regretted, then I can help her connect to the man again. And then when I said, so where is the husband? Then she said, oh, how are you? How are you? And I'm even saying, and I walk no no way. Now somebody say, oh, so I pray here. We be a fako. Now Edward, Jonathan, it was Christian tradition. They also believe that marriage and family life. It's a small church. Jonathan, if you're the kind who wants to know, no more amamre, no more the S C one to say, what did he say? Our real so a sorry. Where the husband is the pastor, 
the wife is the assistant pastor. So who are the members? And they, they wouldn't even say the children, they say the household. Many great preachers, many great people. These are the people who left England and then they came to settle in New England. You see all the big, big universities? It is, it is because of these people who came to settle the Boston area. All the universities, they entered into the parliament and then they changed the laws because they never separated their Christianity from their public life. It is a uh, New England there. They also believe that marriage and family life is a seminary. Where the Bible is taught. Now I want to end. What will happen if we take marriage and family life seriously? Wouldn't we have spared the world of all the challenges that it is? What will happen if you had brought Jesus into your marriage? Then by this time, your marriage is better than what you have now. But it is not late. You can build a good one out of the existing one now. You can start breaking your children and bringing them to the family altar again. Start making your home a small church. Let that place be a seminary. Go into marriage, go into family life as a calling. And desire and start to support your, your spouse's salvation. To possess the nations, we should be able to start possessing our family. Because it is the base of the society. Without marriage, there will be no family. Without family, there will be no society. Without that, there could be no nation. Maybe you are a young person here, you also have this kind of idea about marriage. Don't fight against what God has instituted. You can't be wiser than the mighty one. Change your mind. Let us all come and honor marriage. And every good thing that was at the back of his mind when he instituted marriage will be yours.